Hello, MCU fans. Today we're going to rank 37 romances in the MCU. Now, this was a suggestion given to me recently by a viewer, and I thought it was a great idea. So I've broken it into five main sections, ranking from ain't nothing cooking in the oven to smoking hot. <laughs> so let's dive right in and see what we get when we rank 37 romances in the MCU. All right, section one is entitled, Let's Give Them Something to Talk About. And this is basically non-romances, but still situations where people really want to make them into romances. So let's see what we've got. Well, right off the bat, Sam and Bucky. Those two are shipped so many times. But you can understand why, right? I mean, in Civil War, that moment when they were sitting in the back seat together, it started getting people talking. Of course, then they were fighting together during the, during the battle in Civil War, and then they get their own show. And they just look like best buddies, right? Or is there something more? Look at that smoldering look. And then there's that scene. <laughs> so, you know, I cannot blame people for wanting to ship them. I don't think anything is going on between the two of them other than a nice little bromance. But still, <laughs> yeah, they, they got to stop meeting like that. Got to stop meeting like that. All right, then you got Cap and Bucky. So those two just are fantastic friends, you know, to, to the end of the line, right? Um, no, no romance there. I, 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 people can ship them all they want. Those are just two wonderful friends who would do anything for each other. However, Bucky yet again shows up, and this time with Sarah, Sam's sister. And look at that smile. Look at that smile. And look how he's showing off in front of her. I think there may be a spark here. It, it's, it's just something to talk about right now, right? But I think maybe if there's another season of those two together, uh, Sam and Bucky, that maybe he and Sarah, Bucky and Sarah, might be getting together. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, then you have Druig and Makari. Uh, supposedly, they were not even going to have that many scenes in the movie, but their chemistry was so good that by the end, you really assumed there is something going on. You remember him calling her my beautiful, beautiful Makari, and she just got that smile on her face. She just lit up. So I have no idea if there's an actual romance there, but it would it'd be pretty cool if they explored it in Eternals 2. Then we have Red Guardian and Melina. I mean, they were actually a married couple, or pretended to be, so you wonder if there's something going on between them. Because when they got back together, they seemed, you know, pretty, pretty much fell right into the relationship again. But Apparently, just a platonic relationship, as far as we know. All right, then you got Jen and Matt. Those two were so cute together in She-Hulk. I mean, you know, we know at least there was a physical romance, right? You got the walk of shame there afterwards. But then he did hang around afterwards at the picnic. So who knows? Who knows if there's anything more uh, than a, than a one-night stand? But uh, it, it was it was cool to see... And uh, maybe they'll explore it further in Daredevil, Born Again, and beyond. And then Shang-Chi and Katie. I mean, they said they're friends. They told their parents we're just friends. But man, uh, you wonder, you wonder. They just look so cute together. And they went through a shared experience, a near-death experience, and that will draw people together like nothing else. So we'll see in the next Shang-Chi movie. Maybe those two will end up getting together. And then Steve and Natasha, one of my favorite non-romances. I mean, that kiss on the elevator and then the sweet peck on the cheek at the end of Winter Soldier. Uh, obviously, she was doing nothing but flirting, but still, uh, their chemistry was really interesting to see. Uh, so no relationship, nothing going on, but definitely something to talk about. Okay, section two, married with children. There's no doubt that once you're married and once you have kids, it's kind of hard to keep the spark going. So it's, it's unclear how much of a romance was still brewing in the oven with these guys, but let's take a look at some of the married couples. We have Howard and Maria Stark. They were always so busy. Obviously, Howard was terribly busy. Uh, hopefully, they kept the romance going, but it, it's hard to tell. Uh, then, though, you have the Maximoff parents. Now, they really seem to love each other. Uh, Wander and Pietro's parents. Um, you'd like to think that they had a really loving relationship before, of course, tragedy struck. Then there's Odin and Frigga. They spent most of their time arguing <laughs> about Loki and about Thor and what to do with them. 
But I have a feeling that they loved each other deeply. Even if Odin didn't show it very often, I, I'm sure Frigga, Frigga showed him at least. But I, I think in his heart he loved her. And then you've got the Khan family, uh, Kamala's parents. Um, seemed like wonderful parents. Uh, there was at least that one scene where when they were home alone and <laughs> were getting a little frisky. Uh, so, yeah, you can assume that they must love each other, and they certainly love Kamala. I mean, they look good in green. They really, they tried. They really tried to be good parents. So hopefully, hopefully their relationship is still, uh, still nice and romantic. And then, of course, we know Hank and Janet Pym, very romantic. Of course, they were, they were, they were separated for so many years, for decades. But when they got back together, it was like they never, never were apart. Beautiful. Just beautiful. All right, section three. It must have been love. You can tell I'm an 80s fan, right? Roxette. But look at those lyrics. It must have been love, but it's over now. It must have been good, but I lost it somehow. So that's what this section is about. Romances that, you know, were, were pretty hot for a moment, and then they were gone. Ned and Betty. <laughs> Ned and Betty, what a cute summer-loving romance, right? And their the, the breakup was just so sweet. Uh, just, uh, we're still friends. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. And then Circe and Dane, they were a cute couple. They had some good moments together, but it was just never going to work. It wasn't going to last. Poor Dane. Feel sorry for the guy. Uh, Steve and Sharon. There's Steve on the list again with these non-romances or these sort of romances. I mean, that, that was hot. That was hot for a little while there, but no, wasn't going to go anywhere. And, you know, it was also a little weird, <laughs> a little weird at times. Uh, and then Bruce and Natasha, speaking of weird or at least awkward, it was an awkward relationship, yet at the same time, it was so sweet. I mean, when she would calm him down, that was just so beautiful. But, you know, then it just ended. We didn't really know why. We didn't really know when, but it just was over. And then Okoye and Wakabi, theirs is a very interesting relationship. They're married. We learned that in Black Widow, or in, in Black Widow, in Black Panther, but boy, did things take a nasty turn there. And you wonder if they ever really got back together after the conflict. In fact, he's obviously Wakabi's not in uh, Wakanda Forever, uh, Black Panther 2. Um, now, the actor had uh, difficulties that he couldn't appear in it. But in universe, I'm betting he's not allowed in Wakanda right now. He's either in, in jail or he's been exiled. So I don't know. I'm kind of assuming they're not together right now, but we'll see. Maybe we'll find out later down the road. Uh, then Loki and Sylvie. Now, the reason I list this in the uh, must have been love section is I don't think they're still together. I think that probably after the end of Loki season one, uh, they're taking a break. Uh, what an interesting relationship, right? <laughs> uh, uh, it only figures that Loki could only fall for himself or a variant of himself. But we'll see. Maybe they get back together in season two, but they definitely had a, uh, a falling away at the end of season one. A big, big disagreement. Uh, then Happy and Aunt May. <laughs> their, their relationship was, was fast coming together and fast coming apart. But uh, still, still great to see them together for the, for the short time we had them. Uh, and then Bruce and Betty. Talk about one of the most passionate relationships that we just, it just vanished. I mean, it got hot and heavy there for a while. But also what was so cool was she had so many shared experiences with him Th through the pain and the trauma he went through of, of turning into the Hulk and then turning back to Bruce. You know, she experienced it with him. Um, I just, I don't know. I'd love for this relationship to be explained. I'd love to know what happened. I'd love to see her again. But I, I listed in this section because obviously the relationship is, is not on now. It's been, been gone for years. So maybe we'll see her again. And then Peter and Liz, one of the cutest relationships that I wish somehow could still be together. I love him and MJ, don't get me wrong. But man, those two were just so cute together. Um, and I love the moment when he realizes, okay, yeah, this relationship is not going to work out. You know, she, she's still smiling and he realizes, yeah, her dad's the vulture. That's not good. But what, what a cute relationship for as long as it lasted. So, now we move to relationships that are still together, or if they're not, because maybe one of the two has died, we'll see in several cases, they were together until the last moment. So this section is so happy together. The only one for me is you, and you for me, so happy together. All right, 
So now we're ranking them. We're down to 15. 15, number 15, Icarus and Circe. Um, what, a, what a relationship, right? I mean, lasted centuries. Uh, then they were apart forever and then back together like they were never apart. And what's so amazing about uh, their relationship is, you know, Icarus did not want to stop uh, the emergence. Uh, his entire life was based on uh, helping the emergence happen. And he did it because he loved Circe, because he couldn't kill her, he couldn't stop her, and instead he joined her. And then showing just how much that, how, how traumatized he was by his love for her, yet failing to let Tiamat come to life, he apparently committed suicide. I, I believe he died, some believe he didn't, but either way, in his mind, this was all that was left. Wow. I mean, that, that's a strong love, definitely a strong love. All right, number 14, uh, Aisha and Hassan. Now, they were uh, Kamala's great-grandparents. We didn't learn much about their relationship, but when we did see it, it was beautiful. They were passionate for each other, uh, and you know it really showed through. Their love really showed through, even in the short time that we got to be with them. Number 13, Fastos and Ben from The Eternals. Uh, the first uh, same-sex relationship, I mean, real relationship. Obviously, an end game, you know, there were there was a casual mention of one, um, but but Fastos and Ben was the first real real same sex relationship. But that aside, was a great relationship. Period. You could tell they loved each other, uh, loved their child. Um, yeah, it's just really neat. We didn't spend a lot of time with them together, but what we did get was was really cool. Uh, number twelve, Mark. Stephen and Layla, the three-way relationship, right? But what was so cool, whether it was Stephen, especially when it was Stephen, but also when it was Mark, you could tell how much they loved each other. You could tell how much they meant. In fact, you sometimes wonder, you wondered if Stephen and Mark were, were jealous of each other, but it seemed like they worked it out at the end. But w what I really loved was just how, how much they cared for each other. You can just see it in their expressions whenever they were together. So, you know, we didn't get a lot of this relationship because uh, it was only one season, but I'm sure that if there's a season two, which hopefully there will be of Moon Knight, we're going to learn a lot more about this relationship and see them continue to grow together. Number 11, Wen Wu and Ying Li. Um, wow, what, what a passionate relationship. I mean, he came in probably assuming wanting to kill her, at least to, to disarm her, and instead they, they had that beautiful dance together and then obviously get together, have two wonderful kids, uh, uh, Shang-Chi and his sister, Xia Ling. Uh, and then when he loses uh, Ying Li, Wen Wu goes nuts, right? But the, the Dweller in Darkness used that to lure him uh, to Talo to try to free it when he thought he was doing it for her. So while he messed up and while he became a villain, obviously, he did it for love. It just showed how passionate his love for her was. So... Really, really cool. We've seen both with, with uh, Wen Wu and with Icarus how the love has, yes, at times made them bad, but also brought them around and made them good. Uh, so pretty cool, pretty passionate. All right, and we move to our final section in our top 10 list as we have Endless Love. This section is called Endless Love. Yes, I know, I love the 80s too much, but look at that. You will always be my endless love. Two hearts, two hearts that beat as one. Oh, just, it's great lyrics. Anyway, <laughs> you can make fun of me in the comments. I don't mind. <laughs> All right, this section is endless love as we get to the top 10. All right, number 10, Scott and Hope. Number one, it's cool that they're both superheroes. That's the first time we've seen that uh, in these relationships where they're both able to spend time together in fighting crime as well as spending time together romantically. I mean, you could just tell that there was, there was something smoking between those two. Uh, from the first moment they were together. I mean, even when, when Hope was <laughs> kind of beating him up a bit, you could still tell. They, they really had an attraction. Um, and what's great about their relationship is they can just hang out together, to be together, and to spend time. That, that's so important. Uh, you can go fight crime all you want, but what really makes a relationship strong is just hanging out and spending time together. It's beautiful. All right, number nine, Clint and Laura Barton. From the moment we first met them, you could see how proud Hawkeye was to let everybody meet his family, to meet his wife. Um, they love each other. It's so apparent. Uh, and then, oh, so tragic when he lost her during the blip and, then, and, and became Ronin and went just nuts uh, having lost her and then to get her back again in Endgame. It was a beautiful scene, just beautiful. 
Uh, and then to see their relationship continue uh, in Hawkeye and to see how cool it was to learn you know, that she had been Mockingbird and therefore she understood what he was doing. They were able, she was able to support him while he was off fighting crime and even able to help him. Very, very cool. Um, and then, you know, one of the most important things about a relationship is loving your kids. And they both love their kids. Uh, that's so cool. Great parents. All right, number eight, T'Challa and Nakia. Talk about just smoldering <laughs> looks to each other. Every time they look at each other, you're like, man, so, somebody's playing some romantic music in the background, apparently, because they just love each other. Um, and then obviously, tragically, um, the Chadwick Boseman passed away, and then in universe, T'Challa passed away. But of course, we know we will be getting T'Challa Jr. down the road, and Nakia and her love is lost, but still, she has uh, uh, T'Challa uh, in his son and in her son. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Number seven, Stephen and Christine. This one's interesting because they never really got together, obviously. Um, it, it just never worked out. Um, even in the what if episode where, where, hey, it looked like this is going a different direction and they're going to get together. Nope, she dies. So it, should it really be up this high as a relationship? Yes. I say yes, because what a beautiful line in Multiverse of Madness when he said, I love you. I love you in every universe. Oh man. <laughs> wow. I mean, that, that just, no, they, they were never going to be together. He knew that it just wasn't going to work out but it didn't mean he did not love her deeply. And of course, we saw how that love drove him in the What If episode to basically wipe out the entire universe. So again, we've seen with, you know, with, with Icarus and Wen Wu, and now with, with Steven, how much the love has driven them to do, how much they're willing to do in the name of that love. Uh, wow, that, that's very strong love. So great relationship with those two. Um, even if they never got together, the love is very powerful. All right, number six, Peter and MJ. And it's interesting, like I said before, had, had, had it worked out with Liz, I'd have been fine if Peter and MJ never got together. But you know, once Liz was gone and once you started to see their chemistry, yeah, yeah, I was pretty excited to see them together. It was, it, it, it's been a great relationship. They truly love each other. And it's kind of cool. She knows his secret identity. So even though she's not a superhero and they can't do superheroing together, and in fact, she, she never, ever wants him to swing her around town again. It's still cool that they can share that. Well, they could share it until, of course, he forgot or she had to forget who he was. But it was really cool, too, that they could just lay there and support each other and be together. You know, he was going through some very tough times um, and, and she was there for him. And, and likewise, uh, he was there for her when, when necessary. But unfortunately, their relationship for now is on pause as no one knows who he is anymore. I don't think that's going to stay that way. I think in Spider-Man 4 or down the road, they will get back together again because their relationship is so cool and it would be a shame to not see it continue on. All right, number five, Thor and Jane. What an interesting on-again, off-again relationship they've had. They're together in Thor 1, then he takes off for a while and they get back together in Thor 2. And then he takes off for a little while again, but then they get together, uh, as we see in um, Thor 4 during the flashbacks, you know, they're dating and the hot dog costume, gotta love it. Uh, then they break up and then they're away for a long time. And yet when they get back together, it was like they were never apart. I mean, obviously Thor counted the days they were apart. Um, but yeah, they, they, they have a very powerful and strong love that unfortunately ended with, with uh, Jane dying and uh, from cancer and going to Valhalla, although who knows, maybe we'll see her again. But certainly their love, uh, while it had its moments of, of together and not and together and not, uh, up and down, up and down, it was consistent that they always loved each other. Beautiful. All right, number four, Steve and Peggy. You know, you could tell throughout the movie that there was something going on between them, right? But when she walked in in that red dress, which she didn't need to do, but she did it for him, <laughs> you know, to, to just to get his attention to say, hey, <laughs> did, you do notice me, right? <laughs> of course he did from, from the moment, from the begin first moment they saw each other. But yeah, pretty cool. From that moment on, you knew there was something special. 
Uh, then there's that sad moment when, you know, as he's having to crash land the ship, he's looking at her one last time, realizing this is it. This is it for us. Then he comes out of the ice. He wouldn't have expected he was going to live, but he did. And he gets to spend the final days with Peggy, which is just beautiful, uh, as he, as he uh, was with her, uh, you know, during her final moments. And then, of course, in Endgame, makes that decision to go back and spend even more time with her. The relationship that never died, and finally, he got that dance. Wonderful relationship. All right, number three. I do realize people are probably not going to agree with the order of all of these choices, so in the comments, let me know. These are just my opinions, but number three, Wanda and Vision. Now, got to be one of the strangest relationships well, in the comics as well as in the movies, but hey, it was neat to see it just develop and blossom from this first date here uh, to when then uh, in, in uh, Infinity War, you know, they spent the two years exploring their relationship. Obviously, he dies in Infinity War, and she recreates him out of her grief in uh, WandaVision, and they spend that time together until finally she realizes, nope, this isn't real. It needs to end. But we get that beautiful line from Vision of what is grief, if not love persevering? I mean, I, that's almost the quote of all of phase four. So yeah, their relationship has always been strange, a little hard to wrap your head around at times, but so beautifully portrayed, um, especially in WandaVision. And we'll see, maybe they'll still get back together. You know, he's, uh, he's been uh, reactivated and his memories have been put back in place and she's, I think, not dead personally, but who knows, down the road, maybe this relationship will continue. All right, number two, Peter Quill and Gamora. You know, he was such a scoundrel and a rascal for so long, but the moment he met Gamora, you could just tell something was special there, that, that something, there was something more th th with this relationship. In fact, it wasn't long before he was actually willing to give his life for her. And he realized it was that special that, I mean, he would have died, but uh, he didn't care as long as she was able to live. So he was already sacrificing himself for her in... in, in romantic ways you can't even describe, right? Uh, and that continued to blossom their relationship. Um, and you really saw how deep his love for her was with his decision in Infinity War. And I mean, it was the wrong decision. I think half of America was mad at him for it. But still, the fact that he was so passionate and so angry and so emotionally wrought, uh, wrought that he... He, he knocked Thanos out of that uh, trance, shows how much he loved Gamora. So let's hope that they do indeed get back together somehow in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. They get one last chance. Uh, let's see if they can make it stick. And number one, you probably guessed it at this point, but in my mind, the OG relationship, Tony and Pepper. You know, every movie that Tony was in, Pepper was either in it with him or mentioned. That, is, that shows how strong their relationship was that you couldn't even imagine Tony being in a movie that she wasn't also in it. Amazing. So from this first uh, experience they had together where she, where she replaces the arc reactor in what was a very bizarre yet romantic situation to their rooftop kiss um, in Iron Man 2 to uh, the just, uh, just gut-wrenching scene in Avengers where Tony fears he's going to die, assumes he's going to die, and tries to make that call to Pepper, and it fails. He's not able to make the call. Um, then in Iron Man 3, when he uses his suit to protect her, uh, that was the most important thing on his mind, was her and, and, and her surviving. Um, then in a bizarrely romantic moment, the fact that we learn in a spur-of-the-moment pr uh, proposal to Pepper that he's actually had that ring for eight years. Eight years he knew they were going to get together. Wow. I mean, you know, you think he, you think he's just kind of flying by the seat of his pants, which he is quite often. But no, he had that prepared all that time. Then there he is in space uh, in Endgame, realizing he's going to die, uh, saying that as he drifts off, he's going to dream about her, that it's always her. It's always you. Just beautiful, just beautiful. And it has, it's always been Pepper. That's the, that's the thing that makes us so beautiful. Then luckily he, he is rescued 
Um, and, and, and he doesn't even want to help. He doesn't even want to help create the time device, but Pepper convinces him, you won't rest unless you do. You need to do this. So she was supportive of him, and he was obviously only willing to do it if she was okay, which is, that's very important in a relationship. And then obviously uh, when he tragically dies at the end and she's, she tells him, now you can rest, now you can rest. Just a beautiful relationship from beginning to end with obviously Morgan to carry on um, uh, and maybe Tony's AI coming back, uh, but, but Morgan to carry on, um, Tony's still alive through Morgan. So in my opinion, the number one relationship, uh, hands down, I just love it from beginning to end. Uh, so let me know what you think. Uh, did I did I miss any relationships? I mean, 37, I probably got them all, but hey, maybe I missed some. Tell me if you would have ranked them differently, where you would have put them. If I, if I have somebody in the wrong category, uh, let me know. I love the comments. It's always fun to read what other MCU fans are thinking. Uh, and if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content and we can all continue to enjoy the ever-expanding, ever-growing Marvel Cinematic Universe.